Hello, I'm Ed Lester. I'm uh, putting something in the time capsule today, and it's uh, this reactor, in fact, which makes nanomaterials. I'm a professor in chemical technology, which is a fancy way of saying that I'm not an engineer and I'm not a chemist either, I'm somewhere in between, but uh, I developed this reactor to make nanomaterials, and it's a high-pressure reactor that uses hot fluids mixed with cold fluids, and you make particles in it continuously, and uh, this is something we've been working on for the last... 10, 15 years, so it's, uh, it's something close to my heart. This is really important for uh, many reasons. For research reasons, we, we make new materials with it. We've got lots of clients around the world that we make nanomaterials, and we use this particular type of reactor. Uh, we're just scaling this as well, so we're building the world's largest supercritical plant uh, for nano manufacturing in the northeast of England. Um, and uh, this is something that will uh, be quite significant for us for years to come. It was just a eureka moment where we came up with a design and it's been useful to us ever since then. So, you know, almost 10 years we've been working with uh, variations of this and it's continued to um, show real promise in the commercial sector. So it's gone from bench all the way through to commercial. And, and what, you know, what we don't know, obviously, because uh, we can't see into the future, is how useful it will be and how many decades we'll still be using something like this. It has uh, three holes in it. Uh, and a fourth one where we've put in a thermocouple, so that's non monitoring temperature. But essentially, hot fluid goes down this pipe here, just down there, and a cold fluid comes up here, and that's got dissolved metal salts in it. Particles are forming inside the reactor area, which is about there. Particles are then carried away in the fluid, and they go out that way. So you've got two opposing fluids, and the particles form, and they're carried away. So that's how it works, really simple. Fancy plumbing. The sort of more doubtful side of me says well it's bound to be replaced because the future you know we always develop better things um, but at the same time this is based on the laws of physics so unless we get really good at bending the laws of physics in a kind of Star Trek way then I think we'll be using devices like this to make materials there may be better processes there may be more efficient processes but nevertheless Hopefully we'll look back on this and say actually it was a pretty good idea at the time. If you look at real academics around uh, the university then yeah I guess they're all doing very important things and I guess we're, each academic is a drop in the ocean but I travel a lot around the world and we meet a lot of companies interested in materials and some of the things that we're doing with scale up of this uh, process uh, to them is quite significant so I think that's validation that we're doing something uh, important. Obviously they've had a stimulating lecture, they're now full of knowledge and excited about pushing back the boundaries of science. You know, you look back at 10 years ago with laptops, they were inches thick and they're extremely heavy and now, you know, you've got uh, MacBook Air and uh, iPads and so on. We're going to look back at iPads and think, I can't believe they're so heavy, so, uh, so thick and uh, we'll be printing electronics uh, with a different technologies to what exists today and it will give us not just better computing, smaller computing and so on, but it will also be a lot more sustainable, the, the whole uh, industry will be a lot more uh, sustainable. Proudest achievement in science would probably be using an interest in image analysis across a huge range of different applications from face recognition, which we did with the FBI, through uh, road analysis, through to coal and microscopy analysis, all the way through to fluid dynamics and simulations, which led to the de development of that. So yeah, it's just making a an interest and a skill last across a huge range of areas. If I had a message for people 100 years in the future in my position, I'd say good luck, uh, not least because I'm dead. And um, you've got a far harder job to keep um, sustainable industry, uh, sustainable society going because there's less material, more people. It's a real struggle. So, as I say, uh, uh, the only thing I'd probably want to say is good luck. There's some neutron beam work at a nuclear reactor in Japan with this, and this was too radioactive to bring back through customs. So I had to, the Japanese guy that I did the work with gave it me back a few months later when it was safe. So there you go, it's radioactive. Well, there's no more radioactive than a banana now, but this this was actually radioactive which is why I'm leaving it in your department. Yeah, so if you all grow like seven arms or something, there you go. <laughs> That's quite heavy, actually. I'm struggling a bit. Okay, there we go. Reactor in. Okay, there we go. It's a good idea. Who knows? That's the thing. You know, we've already 
developed um, replacements for this design, so it would be nice to see whether we were right or wrong. <laughs>